over this radio. KBAD Las Vegas. My city. My city. It's my station. It's my station. It's Fox Sports Radio 920. You may have noticed that foreclosures during the election year slowed down, but now foreclosures are back in full swing. If you've been living in your house for free, it's just a matter of time before they foreclose on you. My name is Ido Gavish of Gavish Real Estate, and I can and will sell your home regardless of your situation. Call me today at 255-1145 or log on to GavishRealEstate.com. Gavish? That's Gavish. Dear Mom and Dad, one thing I've learned in the Army is that when you're lucky enough to get a little time off, you should put it to good use. So I'm taking a moment to write yeah, and tell you that I'm fine and doing well. We have good uh, days we and go. bad Sorry days over here. We try to remember the good ones and um, get through the bad ones as best we can. So, yeah, now, Mostly we have each other, and that's what keeps us going. That um, and the pride of our commitment so to getting the job now. done, whatever it takes. I miss you all very much and can't so wait to get back to life as usual. Please tell everybody hello for me and that I'll be home soon. And Mom, since you asked, if anyone wants to help, just tell them to contact the USO. You can't believe how much they do for us. With love, your son Michael. The USO depends on the generosity of the American people, people just like you. To find out how you can help, visit us at USO.org. The USO, until everyone comes home. Hi, this is Dr. Shahab Mokhtar with Senogenics. Senogenics is an overall medical approach. We're not just a diet, we're not just a supplement company, we're not a hormone company. We're a customized medical program for each individual's needs. I actually have Dan Green, one of our patients here with us. Dan, what's your experience been like with Senogenics? I, I love it. I've been on it for six weeks now and, and, and I think it's great. You know, Doc, I was a former athlete. I just felt like so tired all the time. I had no energy. I had these long work days. I need something in my life. I need, I need to change this. I want to live. Dan, so after six weeks, what do you think about Cynogenics? I think Cynogenics is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I, I go in there, and next thing you know, I, I'm meeting with this doctor, he, doing a bone scan, and then, you know, a nutritionist, and getting a physical, and I was just overwhelmed with how thorough the examination was. And it, overall, it's just been great. I couldn't thank you enough. Feel and look the best you can this year, and take control of your aging, now with Cynogenics. For more information, go to Cynogenics.com or call 888- What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. I love how people are surprised. This is the Dan Patrick Show. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought that the game plan, the plays they were calling for Kaepernick were wrong because I thought that he was in over his head. There were a couple of plays where he just seemed like he was a little bit lost and the enormity had caught up to him. Now, he played great in the second half, but that's what I wanted to do first half. I would have just said, let's turn it on. I thought they threw the ball too much. Now, I know they were stopping Frank Gore, but I would have said, let's run the read. Let, let's let Kaepernick make a couple of plays. I want that defense thinking that Kaepernick's going to run the ball. It's like first half against Atlanta. They were taking Kaepernick out of the game. And he was not going to run the football. Okay, Frank Gore did well. Well, Frank Gore wasn't doing well in this game. Kaepernick had seven rushes. I got to have Daddy Longlegs out there on the edge making these defensive players nervous because you had some old players on the Ravens. Make them pay. And I didn't think they did that. Oh, uh, yeah. The Dan Patrick Show. Me. It's the Dan Patrick Show. Weekday mornings at 6 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu, oh, I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know. It helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit the state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. Stop! 
Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. Else is paying up to 24% on their title loans. You can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Fast Cash Title Loans. Hey, this is Todd Evans from Judas and the MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, going to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go. Here we go. Go. Welcome to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with myself, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. And we have another packed house for you tonight. World Series of Fighting President Ray Seffer will be joining us, as well as Ultimate Fighter Season 17 cast member Uriah Hall. And Simon Marcus from Lion Fight Promotion is going to be joining us later in the show with some kind of a big announcement. But first, since we were preempted all of last week, unfortunately, I know... Lakers. Lakers. Yeah, what type, of, what type of crap is that? I don't know, I don't know. It's a little after the fact, but we got to take a few minutes and give our thoughts on UFC 156. And, and but did not surprise Once again, our very own Joey Varner got... Not the whole card. Oh, only the main oh, card. Hey, hey, hey. Enough. <laughs> 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 it's not too big. But hey, once again, perfect in my predictions. Once again, not only perfect though. A twenty-five dollar bet for a five-fight parlay that everyone told me I was nuts for even saying and suggesting. And not only did I call what would happen, I called how it would happen. I told you exactly how, how it was going to go down. And uh, once again, perfect. Twenty-five dollars turned into. Twenty-five hundred dollars for me, so uh, yeah. What really? You made twenty? You didn't know that? You didn't listen. To I, bro, I put down twenty-five dollars oh. on a five-part parlay, and I won twenty-five hundred. My buddy Ford, one of our listens, one of our listens, Jason Ford. Shout out to Ford. He put down fifty dollars, won five grand. Oh. We also took oh. talking about this all night. You were sitting right next <laughs> to him. You didn't know that? You know me. I'm staring at. I'm staring. I'm, I'm a young man. I'm staring at ring girls. I'm standing hey, hey, goes. Hey, he wasn't watching the fights. He was watching. He was watching Ariane. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not all about the Benjamin. It's all about the boom boom to me. It was amazing. Okay, now look at this guy. Ready? Gonzaga, Prokop. Prokop is supposed to be there to fight Randy Couture. That was the big hype. Gonzaga comes and they hype it. They want it. They're building it. Gonzaga throws a monkey wrench into the mix. Gonzaga, Bigfoot, Prokop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And same with uh, a Bigfoot Silva yep. versus Overeem. Again, it was the same thing. Overeem is supposed to steamroll Bigfoot and then fight Kane for the heavyweight championship. Liz. Mooch. Yeah, Carl Mooch. But it's been happening, but it just seems like, man. In that I about, I loved uh, the John Fitch, Damian Maya fight. Real good fight. It went exactly like we thought it would, but I'm still. I know I what you're think, upset about. I think Frankie won I knew you were rounds say that. three, four, and five. I knew you were going to. Time. And, and I thought I, I gave 
I gave these places four or five, but I thought three truly was your day. And we were it was it was heated. It was bitter. No, that's wrong. No, no, it's no, like no. we should just do the radio show right here. Yeah, really. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the judges saw my way, you know, because you went to the Adelaide Bird School. Of <laughs> now wait, what it now she she had another blunder the other night, didn't she? She there was something on that card where she wasn't she the forty nine the shutout? Wasn't there one shutout on that score? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think she gave, she might have been the shutout. She gave uh, Aldo all the rounds. Yeah. Yeah, that lady does I don't not agree know. With that. that lady does not know what she Happening in judging or the Nevada State Athletic Board, and I think it's I think it's a travesty. I think it's a joke. I'll be honest; it's not just Nevada. Okay, we've seen it happen in California. We've seen it happen in other places too. It's just it's it's the scary side of politics. It's the you're getting you, you've got shady people doing shady deals, allowing shady people. But working I, I don't for think them. I, I don't I don't know necessarily think that this is a shady thing. I you do. Know, you think that the, the judging decisions. Are or, or the fact that some the judges the, still have their job. Just the, job. the fact that some of them still have their job. And then referees like Kim Winslow with that stand up in the middle of, of what what was that about? I'm with you. You know, like there, some people need to be held accountable. Well, what are some of the other fights, standout fights you want to talk about real quick and go over before we bring Ray Cepho here into the mix of the conversation? By the way, anytime you want to jump in, Ray, just jump in and give your thoughts, especially when we get up to the Jaderon fight. Yeah, that that was disappointing. Ty- Tyrone Woodley, you know. Well, you, you know what the worst part about that is? It takes nothing away from Woodley, but watching it live, okay? I'm sitting next to Pyle. I'm sitting next to a bunch of other fighters, Danny Castillo. Watching it live, Woodley missed. He went to kind of run forward and go a straight right, and he kind of lost his footing, and it looked like his foot st- comes to foot step, but he tripped, and that straight right kind of turned into a loop. So Jay went, he moved his hand to carry the straight right, and Woodley, like, tripped, and, and, it, and it was just a fluke. You know, nothing not to take nothing away from him, because he caught Jay behind the wheel. That's his first spot. Anybody gets caught behind the wheel like that, you're going to be all bambi legs, and, and it's going to be so long before you go to sleep. But the, the reason he landed the punch the way he did had nothing to do with technique. It had to do with he tripped. It was a fluke. <laughs> Mr. Hey, you know what's Mr. Better when it comes to the art of striking than, than, than six-time Mr. world's Ray. champion, president of World Series of Fighting, Ray Sefo. Ray Sefo, what are your thoughts, Ray? I, I think the biggest uh, disappointment that night was that uh, because Jay was so ready to go. I mean, he went in at uh, 168. Fortunately. He said it was a lucky shot. Well, unfortunately, in our business, lucky shots count. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that was the big uh, disappointment uh, for me as well as Jay is that he didn't get – um, the fight didn't go long enough for him to actually really get in and, uh, and compete. I think he would probably would have felt better if he had fought you know, two rounds and, and got caught and at least you know, doing his thing. But – I mean, this is, this is what happens in our game. Nature of the beast, yeah. huh? And, and Absolutely. Look at Strike Force overall. I mean, I know we do have a lot to talk about tonight, but Strike Force oh, overall dude. going 0 and 4. What was our 4 0? 4 0, that's what I yeah, meant. No, yeah. What was our lock of the night? Our lock. We all said it across the board. Jacob Volkman. Jacob Volkman's going to smother uh, Bobby Green. And Bobby Green, you know what? This is If I'm going to be wrong at any time, I'm glad it was there because <laughs> not a big Volkman fan by his style of fighting. And, and his post fight interviews, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and I like Green style, and he just man, he was awesome, tenacious, wouldn't be held down, wouldn't stop, you know. And he broke Volkman. Volkman usually breaks people on top, smothering him. And this time, the man on bottom would not be kept down, and he ended up breaking Jacob Volkman. Yeah, it, very impressive. And like, like you know, we had we were joking about the post fight speech, and oh, <laughs> this guy's already got one prepared. We're screwed. But I mean, in his last fight, you saw how dominant he was against Roll thought maybe we're going to see an aggressive type of Volkman, but he came out and he Bobby Green, very aggressive. I think everybody on Strike Force made 
very big statement the other night, you know, for the UFC, showing, hey, you know, we belong here. We do belong with the big boys. And, and it's, it's a good start. Absolutely. Good start for the Strike Force uh, roster coming over. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was a great fight card, and finally we got to talk about it and give a few of our thoughts on that as well. But I want to reintroduce Ray Seffo coming in. Ray, what's happening, man? And w what's going on? What's going on, World Series of Fighting? What are we talking about tonight? Give us some information. Um, you know, we, we've signed a three year with the NBC Sports Network, um, which we're very thrilled and proud to be part of that. The next event is March 23rd, uh, Atlanta City. Um, New Jersey, so yeah. What's up with that, man? You taking <laughs> you taking the fights away from us? This is Vegas. You're supposed to be here with us. I, I'm supposed I, to be able to go I, watch I, this fight live. I've, I got you, bro. I mean, I, I you know, I wish we were here. But you gonna you know. fly me out, huh? <laughs> you gonna fly me out? You you knew that? You didn't get the, the <laughs> I ticket? Didn't, I didn't get the memo. No. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting times for uh, World Series of Fighting. Okay, what are some of the the fight? Any fights? But what, what, what do we Made have? On heavyweight the fight title, court? right? I, actually, is it a heavyweight? title? Because the, um, who, who? Yeah, Jim Miner versus Butterbean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 I would take him out. No, you wouldn't, because let me tell you something. Yeah, I, stood, all day. I stood next to Butterbean, and that guy has got the worst odor coming from him. You would have, you would have seriously, you'd walk in that cage, you'd throw up. Oh. No, but so. Guy but, is but, horrible but, hygiene. The, the answer, the rumor was, I heard, and you can confirm this here for us now, you can take the official statement, was Andre Arlovsky versus moving up. Heavyweight after his successful debut at light heavyweight with a knockout over DJ Linderman is Anthony Rumble Johnson. Is, is that true? That's absolutely true. And it's for the heavyweight title. No, it's not a title fight. Okay. It's definitely the main event. Beautiful. Um, Still, either way, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, you know, that's, I think that's going to be an ex exciting fight. Um, so I hope they both come because, you know, it's one of these things that these are t two top level guys and uh, it might get to the point where they might not be willing to. I think Anthony this fight, and, and as well as uh, Andre Lasky. So I think it's going to be an exciting fight. Yeah, the the joke started right when the the fight was announced. Uh, I think it's a great. Yeah, I mean, this kid, he has all the potential to be a great, great heavyweight. I'm so excited to see him against the two of just a class act. The world's former world champion, excellent striker in Andre Arlovsky. Stylistically, someone is going to sleep. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's, it's definitely a great fight. And, and I agree with everything you just said, Joey. The fact that, you know, Anthony is... Uh, his last fight, obviously, by the time he jumped in there, would have been 220-225. But that being said, I mean, he looked really strong and, and really determined to fight. Uh, fighting at heavyweight, he doesn't have to cut weight at all. You know what right. I mean? And so he's going to be even stronger, and uh, I think he's going to be fast and a lot more explosive. I think the fight that I'm really looking forward to on the card is Marlon Moraes and Tyson Nam. And yes. Tyson's one of those guys that, you know, there, there was the, the legal issue going back and forth. Bellator wanted him because they hey, he just, he just knocked out their Destroyed, champion, yeah. you know. And then, you know, you, you, uh, Marlon Moraes comes in and, and puts on a, a spectacular performance against Miguel Torres. You know, Miguel was supposed to be the guy headlining. And, hey, look who's going to be moving on. And when he comes out and he, and he puts on a performance like that, these are two fun guys to watch fight. Let me ask you, was that a kind of a monkey wrench in the mix? I mean, uh, what, what you know, because like, because Miguel was the guy, the, you know, he was the the 125 pound, you know, um, heir apparent, you know, he, wa he was the man in that division. He had a lot of hype and then uh, Marais kind of came from nowhere. No one really knew who he was and, exactly. and he, he really kind of just uh, put on a little clinic, just out technique Miguel Torres. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Moreos, uh, Marlon Moreos actually surprised the hell out of me. Um, he not only was composed, he wanted to win. 
He showed that he could attack. He showed that he could counter fight. He showed that he could go to the ground. I mean, he took Miguel down. Um, and, and so he just that night, he just showed that he was this full, complete fighter. Um, and so that was really impressive. You know, and this fight with Tyson Nam, it's going to be an exciting fight. That's the co-main event of the night. Yeah, and, and for also for Marlon, you, you know, that was when Hurricane Sandy had hit New Jersey and New York, and that's, that's where right. he's from. He trains with Frankie Edgar and those guys at Ricardo Almeida. And, and you know, he went a couple of weeks without having a, a gym to train in. Wow. So to be able to, to put on the performance that he did – and dealing with all that leading up to it, I think it made a bigger statement of the type of character he has and the right. fighter he is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely as well. Now tell us a little bit about it because he was part of some great fights. There were some great fights on that first fight card you put Thank on you. on November Thank 3rd. Uh, tell us the progression of how the organization has now come along with NBC and, and your relationship with them and how much they love the fights and how that's played into your relationship with them now going forward. Well, that's right. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, the show, you know, it was a great show and everybody that night turned up and performed. And so, you know, NBC, they had the, uh, a few of the executives there and uh, they loved the show, thoroughly enjoyed it. And, you know, and that show was supposed to be was supposed to be re-aired once after that night. A lot more. And it's been re aired at least eight, ten times already. Have wow. you gotten paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting paid for that or what, Ray? We have to talk to some people. Yeah, that's the thing. I've seen it over and over again. Right. And I mean, were they, were the executives over at NBC, were they kind of a little bit in the beginning apprehensive or maybe had, you know, hey, let's, let's see how this thing goes? And then were they honestly, genuinely looked like they were pleasantly surprised to have it and, and how everything went? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, just like any business, uh, you always got to, you know, be a little bit more on the back step rather than being like all out there and go, hey, listen, we want this right now. So uh, the discussions went on and they we knew that they enjoyed the show. We knew that they liked the show. And uh, we also knew that they wanted, you know, MMA uh, to be part of uh, of NBC Sports Network. And so uh, and then they came up to the holidays. And so that's what really kind of prolonged everything. You know, in the corporate world, nothing gets done in the hol- during the holidays. And so there was kind of like a, a three, four-week, you know, waiting until everybody was back to work and what have you. And uh, and finally, when the, the deal was done, we, everybody was happy with it, and uh, now we're moving forward. Now, we say they were pleasantly surprised. Were you guys pleasantly surprised at their reaction as well? You must have been ecstatic about it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We were. Uh, I mean— we knew that the show, you know, it was the the production, the the way the guys uh, that fought that night uh, performed. We knew that everything, all the elements that needed to be on television was there. Um, I think now it was just a matter of them convincing themselves because I think we did everything uh, that we expect uh, that we wanted to do. Uh, and uh, so when they finally um, maybe you know go over, gone over, the, uh, watched the fight again and viewed it again and realized that. You know, it, it it really is a great product. No, it really was, and it all came off as a great, really, show, and the production was awesome, right. and the, the whole fight card was great. So everything worked out really well. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank and, you. and for this next fight card, do you have uh, Apollo Filo on there? That's correct. Yes. Ooh, the return, huh? The return of Apollo Filo over American soil. Yeah, so I'm it excited could be to see that. Yeah. I, I've heard he's gotten his act together. He's mentally there, ready, and you know, you always knew the type of fighter he was. Beast. Like, uh, that was, for years, it was like, you know, he's... He's being held here because he's going to beat everybody else in that right. Silva camp. You know, Ed Swar- <laughs> Suarez would say for years, Paulo Filo is the guy that could come over and take Anderson's belt, no problem. You know, but it was they were friends, they were training partners, and, you know, that whole thing happened with Chael, and then, you know, whatever, mentally he wasn't there. But now he's back from what I hear. I hear every, you know, I've heard he's had great camps. I saw him fight. I, he fought uh, Shogun's brother, in right? Jungle fought, fight, right? Um I don't Ninja. know what it was, that was. It was Ninja. Ninja, yeah. It was, yeah, some, it was, it was some Brazil card, though. It was all Brazil card. And that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was, that I was think that impressive. was his last fight. That, w- that was his last fight. And, and, you know. And he retired Ninja. I think Ninja retired after yeah, that. Yeah, so Paulo Filo, keep an eye on him. This is He's a beast. Who who else is some young talent, some up-and-coming, or return of some veterans? Who else are, are are you guys out there acquiring right now and you added to your roster? We have Josh Berkman on the card. Love Berkman. Uh, big yeah, fan. Uh, great guy. Uh, love that guy. I mean, he, he's a true uh, gentleman as well as a great fighter. Um, uh, JC Convocanti is uh, Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fo- is facing a young uh, undefeated kid, uh, Justin. Um, his name is spelled G A E 
G A E. Uh, T H J. Oh, Justin Gaethje. Gaethje. Oh, that's I call. It. Oh man, this is he's fighting Jay Z. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you about this kid. He's that, out of a, he's out of Colorado. I called a bunch of his fights in Ring of Fire. What do they call him? The highlight, the human highlight. Yeah, exactly. That? Bro, this kid is something else. He uh he, he's he's young, trains he's, with Leister yeah. Bowling and all the grudge okay. guys out in Colorado. That's right. He's that's right. St. Pierre, and he. Slams people on their head violently five, six, seven, eight times, and I'm talking highlight. Who was the Russian that just fought on the the, the UFC card in uh, um, where Pyle knocked um, out? Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the, who, the, who's the ultimate he, who's fighter Simon? finale? No, no. Uh, who? Ned who Rusum, no. Rusum, Rusum, Rusumar. What's his Hi, Heidi? What's his name? Rusum what? Rusum Habalov. Okay, remember the slam? The way that guy slammed? Gaethje does slams like that. Every single fight. And he does these slams where he lets people shoot on them. And when it looks like they're about to take him out and they get deep, he flips them on their skull. Uh, his last fight that I called, actually, too, was impressive because he fought another wrestler, and he didn't take him down. He outboxed him. He knocked he knocked this dude out violently. Like, this kid, he has so much talent. He has so much potential. And actually, I spoke at length with his coach, Leister Bowling, and he said the biggest drawback to this kid is he knows how good he is. So sometimes he doesn't, he doesn't you know, he kind of... Coastal in practice, he says, but when he turns it on, there's no one on, on the gym or at the gym that can hang with this kid. And him against Jay-Z, that sounds like it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I mean, I've seen footage of this kid, and uh, I think he's amazing. Uh, you know, he's young. Um, he's hungry. Now he has, a you know, a big stage that he can showcase his talent. So, you know, uh, we have a few of those guys uh, on the roster where, um, you know, I think we just signed another kid that's 12-0. and 0, um, couple of guys at eight and oh six and oh you know just slowly building these guys and um i think it's going to be an exciting card I'm are you are you feeling kind of is there a, um a, a not a not a mad dash but is it like in securing this young new talent and you've got bellator out there trying to get them as well and of course the ufc is there almost like a, a mad dash for young talent where it's like you know you got to grab them fast for they or or you're dealing with guys who are already in negotiation or is there just so much talent out there that everyone can stay fed I think it's the third one. Uh, there's so much talent out there that, um, you know, <laughs> you could probably have another two or three more leagues. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> there, there's so much talent, and there's so much talent over, uh, overseas as well. You know, I've talked to a lot of uh, coaches from overseas and, you know, uh, guys that are 4-0, 5-0, 6-0, and and they're fighting some top-level co competition. And so, you know, I, I think there's room for everybody to uh, – uh, have a great show and 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 keep moving forward and and keep growing the sport. Well, that's good news because you're going to be able to enrich World Series of Fighting and every other organization out there. Exactly. There's a lot, a lot of really good fighters exactly. to look forward to. Uh, well, we really look forward to this fight. Are you going to stick around, Ray? You got to stick around with us. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> he puts you on the spot. Huh? Yeah, 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 exactly. right. As long yeah. as during, Ray, the com during the commercial break, he needs to throw some leg kicks at you. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. Ray can do that. You got my dinner ready, too, right? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah do. I got Yeah, yeah. Your lunch is on me, Ray. And dinner. And, and breakfast. And yeah, everything it's else. It's going to be all over you, too. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you. All right, we're going to take a break right now. LASIK in Nevada. Let me tell you. LASIK in Nevada. I have to tell you about an amazing experience I had here in Las Vegas. I recently had the LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes to better than 2020. I don't need glasses anymore. And I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process and extremely, extremely professional. I urge anyone who's out there who's thought about getting laser to speak with my doctor, Dr. Rothman. He should be your doctor as well. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK when you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available. Call 702 636 2010. You're going to be delighted. You did. I know I was. I can actually see now. I can see Ray's punches coming from the other side of the console here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Ultimate Fighter Season 17. We have an amazing interview for you with Uriah Hall. Ray Sefo is going to be sitting in, World Series of Fighting President. And we have an announcement coming up from Simon Marcus as well from Lion Fight. Don't go anywhere. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Hey, ball. Uh, those new Jordan kicks? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, pretty pricey. Where'd you get the cheese for those? Well, since I got LASIK from Dr. Rothman, I've saved a ton in context. Plus all the accessories and the glasses I used to wear on the weekends, not to mention my sports glasses for when I play. Yeah, I see how those expenses could add up. It goes on forever, huh? Yeah, the savings are really something. And the eyesight we've got now is priceless. I love my LASIK. I'm seeing better now than I ever did with my glasses. 
Well, enjoy the kicks, my friend. I'll see you later. Hey, where are you going? I'm going shopping with my savings, my friend. Hey, you know, I could use a new t-shirt to go with my new shoes. <laughs> yeah, nice try. Find out how much you'll save over a long term with state-of-the-art LASIK from the docs who have done over 50,000 procedures. Call 636-2010 because your consultation is free at LASIK of Nevada. 636-2010. For better sight, all right, call LASIK of Nevada today. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Come on, come on, come on. JT the Brick with Tom Looney. We got to get started, started, started. My theory is simple on this. Parents are lazier than they were 50 years ago. 50 years ago when guys were going to war, coming home, playing ball, playing stickball in front of the house. It's a different time. It's the overall laziness. Now, if you're listening to me and you're not a lazy parent, then you're a great parent. God bless you. You know, every, every parent struggles trying to do the right thing. You don't know if you're doing enough, if you're too hard, you put too much pressure on your kid to be good in basketball and Little League. Should you back off a bit? These are real issues that people have to deal with. But the concern, uh, we, all, we all agree that the numbers of kids signing up for tackle football will plummet, not go down. It's going to yeah. plummet. If the NFL and these players win these lawsuits, what you trying to do? This is JT the Brick with Tom Looney. JT the Brick, overnights from 10 to 3 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu, oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know, it helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702 702- 616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I Amanda, was. Amanda, age three. Tyler, age eight. Marissa, age four and a half. We could tell you just how many child abductions last year led to Amber Alerts. Shaniqua, age 14. Ryan, age nine. But this isn't about cold statistics. It's about saving kids. Terrell and Jamal age six months. Please go to wirelessamberalerts.org. Sign up to get free Amber Alert text messages on your cell phone. When an Amber Alert is issued in the areas you've chosen, you'll receive a free text message. If you spot the vehicle, the suspect, or the child described in the alert, call 911. Sign up today for free at wirelessamberalerts.org. You can imagine what the family of an abducted child is feeling. Alexander, age seven. If you actually did help save that child, just imagine what that would feel like. WirelessAmberAlerts.org. A child is calling for help. This message brought to you by the Wireless Foundation, the U.S. Department of Justice, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and the Ad Council. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness. But I need to get my fill of MMA, man. I tune into the MMA Fight Corner. Rock and roll! The MMA Fight Corner. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Vonner, and World Series of Fighting President Ray Seffo joining us as well, and Heidi Fang and Armando behind the board. Um, 
Before the break, by the way, this segment is sponsored by Lazy Nevada. And before the break, uh, we were talking a little bit about Ultimate Fighter Season 17. I told you we have a great interview. But what do you guys think of this season so far? I got to tell you, this is the first time that I've been this excited for just to see what happens. Like, I cannot wait to get home right now. Let's just finish this show now so I can go home and watch it because I think what they've done this year is the documentary style makes it ten times better. Just even the lighting. Have you noticed that when the guys are talking in the interviews, that light they have is an octagon? It's it's kind of weird. It's really cool if you look at it. I think everything they've done this year is is great. And then there's the talent. And then there's the coaches. And they just even add to it. Well, Phil, um, you're welcome. Do you want to thank them for no, that? No, I, no. I know. I know. Thank, hey, if you actually watch the credits tonight, you see at the very end, my name is in there. I help it make says, the it, says, it says no Joey Varners were harmed in the filming <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's great. Well no. done. It is a great season. It is a great season shaping up right now. I can't wait to see the rest of the season. And I, just a little reminder to everybody out there, it is on FX tonight, 9 p.m., so check it out because, I mean, if, if the rest of the season is anything like last week, uh, it's, it's really shaping up to be an awesome season. And right now we have an interview with a guy who just made a brilliant Brutal, brutal knockout last Tuesday night. Uriah Hall, check it out right now on the MMA Fight Corner. Fight Corner, a season 17 Ultimate Fighter cast member standout, Uriah Hall. Uriah, thanks so much for joining us inside the Fight Corner. How are you doing today, man? Doing pretty good, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Now, I guess the big question here is, after that devastating knockout last week of Adam Sella, tell us how you felt after that moment, and how does it feel that the show has just begun, basically, and everyone is already talking about you? Uh, well, right after it happened, um, I felt excited. And any win, you know, the adrenaline, the rush is going to make you feel excited. But uh, right after, I just kind of came back down to earth. I think more of the human side of me pitched in and said, oh, you might have killed this guy. <laughs> I felt pretty bad, and, you know, I was concerned. And, you know, now, looking at the show and to see where it's going and how far it came already even though it's like what three episodes it, it's pretty awesome man. it feels pretty good to, to have to you know experience what I did and watching it from a different angle and uh, I'm excited I'm just like everyone else watching it I'm too excited to you know watch it and see for myself because you know being there is different from watching how they portray it I, I got to tell you, what was what was really really cool was was that moment you just you just described, where right as you land that kick, you see the adrenaline, you see the excitement in your face, and then you can literally watch as this just sudden uh, uh, amount of concern just comes over your face, and you look like you're you're really worried for the guys. It was like a it was a real moment. You don't always see that real moment, and you turned around and you you kind of looked down on him, and she was like, oh, you know, come back here, and you just look so worried, and you said. I'm sorry, Adam, but it was it was just such a genuine moment, and everyone's been talking about about that, not just the knockout, but about you know how how classy and how sportsmanlike that was when you did that. Uh, yeah, for me, you know, sportsmanship is a, is a big deal, and uh, I, I love the competition. I love to be able to go out there and you know uh, take my shots and open ends and just you know just have fun and you know spar or fight. But at the end of the day, you know, may the best man win. But at the same time, it's a sport. And I don't have that animal side to say, yeah, I killed you. I can't. That's not me at all. And uh, maybe it's the way I was brought up. You know, I don't really like to hurt people. Fortunately, I'm in the hurting business. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I got to tell you, to, you know, to add on to what Joey just said, one of the reasons that I requested this interview is not only that you can see that you're an amazing athlete and that you're going to have uh, what I would assume, uh, from what we can see, if I had to project, <laughs> I would say that you're going to have an amazing career. Uh, was this the sportsmanship about you? I actually fell in love with you as a fighter at that moment and had a lot, a lot of respect for you. And I'm sure that there were a lot of other fans that out there that felt the same exact way that I was feeling. You're right. i got to warn you now. The last time you fell in love with someone, it was Rhonda. And she had to get a restraining order because he had a shrine for her. So if you see some shaking at your bushes out there in Queen, Billy Mira might be outside your window. <laughs> That's it, brother. Hey, no, but, but seriously, though, you know, there was that moment where 
when when you saw in your face this look of concern, and at the same time, when they cut to the crowd, you saw this look over everyone's face in the crowd. And at first, it was like, oh, my God, the knockout. But then it was like, oh, my God, I might have to face this guy. And having to live with everyone that you might have to fight, and they witnessed that, did they start treating you differently in the house? Like, would, would you come home and your dinner was cooked? And they're like, hey, we made your bed for you. We did the laundry, you know. Here's the water. Do you need anything else? Like, did you kind of become Debo of the house? No, no. Well, you know, from uh, from the team that I was on, you know, with Luke, uh, uh, Kelvin, uh, K- Kevin, and, and all the rest of the guys in the gym, we – we bonded together to take care of each other. Like, when it's time to fight, you know, we'll take care of each other's meal. We'll make sure the person, it's like when the person likes their birthday. We do the meal, you know, we, we just take care of whatever they need, and we just bonded that way. And I think the other team, they weren't really doing that. As you can see on the first episode with Gilbert, it was like, all right, screw you. But we bonded in that sense. But after the fight, you know, I, I wasn't really thinking how these guys would look at me. And I think at one point when they asked me in certain interviews, like, Oh, do you think guys are talking bad about you? And it kind of clicked. I'm like, oh, I guess they're talking bad about me, and you am a threat. But I welcomed that because it's a competition, and I knew what I signed up for. So I was ready to pretty much go out there and do whatever I had to. Now, coming into this season before it aired, uh, Dana started talking about this this beast, this mystery beast. That this season we got a beast. He 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 did one of the most devastating knockouts in the history of tough. And he said everyone in the house is so scared to fight this guy. One one of the contestants that had to fight him actually had a nervous breakdown. He had a panic attack. He didn't want to fight. What was that? And I know we haven't seen that episode lot yet, but what was that like living in the house with someone you're about to fight and they're literally having a, a, a breakdown because they have to fight you? You know, uh, everyone in the house is a beast, man. It's just the talent that I've seen on the show is by far one of the best. And it's a lot of emotions you got to, you know, live around. You got to you gotta sleep there and, you know, the guy might, you might be fighting is next to you and, you might go upstairs, you get a pass, and you play pool together, you play checkers, chess. It's a lot of emotions, and it's tough. I don't think a lot of people realize how grueling that is, and not to mention making weight, and some guys are like, you know, they have to be on their weight. It's just a lot of emotions that were just running wild, and if you couldn't control it, it will get the best of you. And I try to control it, and, you know, some point I got lashed out, you know, and I lost it, but... Uh, you know, one of my buddies on the show, Dylan Andrews, who was on the opposite team, actually taught me how to handle those emotions. And he was like, you know what, when stuff happens, just write it down. And, you know, me and him were really cool. And I think we had a lot in common. And I saw where he was coming from as a fighter and what he, he had to sacrifice. And I, too, had to sacrifice a lot. And it just really helped me. But I just knew that it was a lot of freaking emotions running wild. And in a sport like that, man, where, you know, mentally – you have to be there 90%. You've got to be ready. And you aren't, you're not just fighting someone out there, man. You're fighting yourself, too. So it's, it's, it's hell. But it's how you handle it. Well, Uriah, talk a little bit about what it was like being in the house with not only the guys but the coaches, too, and being in the gym with them. Because I'll be honest, I, have, I haven't been this excited for a season of The Ultimate Fighter in a long time. And I think last week before your fight, you got to actually see the type of coaches John Jones and Chael Sonnen are. They're both really good, and they both, they're both they really good around the team and around their coaching. What was your experience like with that? Man, my experience with the coaches is just an amazing experience. Uh, you know, Initially, I went there to be on Jones' team, and I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I was like, all right, I'm going to jump on this opportunity get better, and I'm going to work with big guys. And I was more indulged with the whole time. It's like, oh, man, these guys are stars. But, you know, at the end of the day, too, you know, these guys are just like us. They're regular human beings. But, you know, the difference is they're in a different place in their life. And with Chell, how he helped me, man, I cannot repay that, too. He, he got me out of a really bad state I was in in my head. You know, I lost a couple of fights, you know, uh, one against a really amazing guy, Chris Wideman, he's a top contender now. Another one to Costa Filippo. And, you know, I wasn't used to that, and it got the best of me. And I just didn't know how to handle stuff. And, you know, when people tell you you're good, you know, it's hard to see it. And he made me realize what I had. And one of the biggest things and biggest issues I had was I wasn't giving myself props, you know. I, I wouldn't 
pat myself on the back, like you said. I was just constantly trying to get better, not realizing how good I've gotten. And he just made me realize that it's okay, man, and you know, I'm a human being, and it's okay to have these emotions and just go out there and do my best. So it was just a lot of weight off my shoulders, and I just felt really good, and you know, I thank him for that. You know, you're right. You bring up a good point. I know that you had a confidence issue growing up. Is that that's correct, right? Yes. <laughs> and I guess you know that you said uh, Chael Sonnen has helped you with that, especially now he helped you get into your head and it helped with your fight. But after the last fight, how is your confidence now? I mean, you must be off the charts right at this moment. <laughs> well, confidence is another level. It's not to say, oh, let me, I'm going to go out there and beat anybody. You know, I could lose. lose I, I don't really know what the future holds, but the, what I've gotten is to not be afraid. That was just my biggest fear, which is afraid. I was afraid to go out there and just try. You know, I was afraid to go against wrestlers. I was afraid to go against guys that were a big status. But now, better than me, way better than me, I look at that as a great thing. You know, win or lose. And maybe I go out there and I lose, but that would be an unbelievable great attempt even to fail. Def yeah, gotcha. So, yeah, now, you were here in Las Vegas training at the Ultimate yeah. Fighter gym. Um, I know that's a lot different for you in New York. I, I know you, you're at the gym in Queens, and I believe does, does uh, Tiger Shulman still do their uh, pro practices in Elmwood Park at the headquarters? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, uh, we definitely have a lot of school in New York, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area, even Florida, too. And our corporate is in uh, New Jersey, and that's where my camp is. That's where I train. So is it hard traveling so much? I mean, after you've seen what it's like to probably just, you got one place to go and train, and, you know, I know you're, you're Academy in Queens, and then you're out to Elmwood Park, New Jersey, and it's a lot of traveling around. It's tough to get around with the tri-state traffic. Uh, how, how is it dealing with that coming from this type of experience? I've been doing it for such a long time that I don't even look at that as a problem. It's going to have its bad days when you wake up and you're like, oh, shit, I got to go this route. I got to go here. But you know what? It's a dream that I'm chasing, and it's worth it. You know, I got to make sacrifices. And I know I'm not going to be doing it forever, but at least I want to look back and say, yo, I bust my ass, and I got to where I wanted to be. So I don't really look at it as a big problem. You know, postseason uh, uh, on the Ultimate Fighter, you always see a lot of fighters who were moved by a coach and they relocate to that coach's camp or, or another fighter on the show. Um, and, and, and I know you love Tiger Showman's, but after you've had such a, a positive, amazing experience with Chael Sonnen, um, are you going to be going out in there doing some training with him in the future? Oh, man. I definitely want to, you know, gain as much as I can. If, when I get the opportunity, I am definitely want to train with Chael. As far as anything goes, you know, that's where I am right now. But uh, if I want to come out of my comfort zone, and I think that's important. You know, it, you stick around too much for one thing, then you're not really seeing your flaws or, you know, your holes. And, you know, I went with, you know, all the guys. I went to a couple of the multi schools just to see what Absolutely. I'm ago, he says, you know, been with someone for a long time, and if you want to get better, you have to travel to see, get get things from a new perspective, see how someone else differs, because it just expands your mind, expands your technique and your capabilities. Absolutely, you have to do. Well, Uriah, we want to thank you for joining us here in the. Hey, also, if you look at a lot of the champions in the UFC. Uh, they have a lot of your, uh, your attributes as far as your personality is concerned. John Jones, uh, George St. Pierre, everybody's very humble. Uh, we expect to see some great things from you in the future, and we also want to extend the invitation for that. When you get to Vegas, we want to welcome you on the MMA Fight Corner here in person. Thank you, man. It'll be my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Good. Really, really, really good interview. <laughs> I I'll tell you, you know, Last week, when we were we were all knew what was coming, that the Ultimate Fighter was going to end with this spectacular, devastating knockout, the one that Dana went on record and say, not only is it the greatest knockout I've ever seen in tough history, it may be the greatest knockout I've ever seen in MMA. 
Well, all last week, waiting another leading up to that show, I'm just, well, I can't wait till it starts, can't wait till it starts. And then the show starts, and it's just get to the fight, just get to the fight, just get to the fight. Then the fight, I just want to see the knockout. All I want to see is the knockout. And then it happened, and I was upset. Not because it was so, it wasn't, didn't live up to the hype, but you really felt bad for that guy on the floor. Oh, you're like, not kidding, dude. Like the breathing and <clears throat> just the silence, it was really like, it was like, wow. Well, like, also, this kid's hurt. No, you know what was funny, though, is that I, I was doing the same exact thing through the whole show, through the whole fight. And then well, there's 20 seconds left in the round, there's 15 seconds, there's 10 seconds. And in my head, right then, I'm like, okay, so it must happen around two. And then, boom, <laughs> that was it, lights out. But I'll tell you what, though, one thing I noticed, man, I think Uriah, I think he's got a dark side. And I mean this because remember in the last episode when he was on the porch and he said he said cooker about being a chef. Yeah. And one of the guys said, you know, you mean chef and kind of laughed. And he came back and he was pissed and he was like, man, I want to fight him. He said that, you know. And then in the interview just now, he kind of references a time on the show where he loses it. And I think it's like he's he is this he is this classic. He is this gentleman. But there's that kid inside of him that that's fed up from getting bullied. That's kind of like. Always on the tink, always on the, 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 the like teetering. When did it come out? Like you know, you know, like you're not gonna bully. Remember, remember little Ralphie when, when in, in Christmas Story when he when he has finally has enough with the bully. And he unle- like, so are we he, gonna have to wash out Uriah Hall's mouth with soap by the time <laughs> the season's over? <laughs> uh, he did. Uh, he did drop a couple S H I T bombs on us. He, he yeah he did you know but he you're right he is a the way he com- comes off the way he did last episode you know you saw the concern. You saw it all, but you know, like, cause I think he was, pl- I think he played with that guy the whole, f- the whole round. I think he was. He's and then just and he's just, he was just waiting. And then as soon as that, that 10 second clacker hit, he saw, all right. It was Adam, right? Was his name? Adam Sella. Adam, Sella, I, Adam yeah. just stopped. And then it was like, all right, now I'm going to do it. Now I strike. His head stopped. His, there was no movement. That's it. Now I'll end the fight and I'll do it in spectacular fashion. One of the cool things I like too is I, I was watching a training video uh, uh, Bobby Razik did uh, on One him. of the best. Yeah, I love his stuff. And in the video, Uriah was drilling this combo where he throws a fake left hook and goes into that same spinning kick. And he was drilling that through the whole video. And then that night we watched the fight and that's the technique that's he what uses. he does. Well, I urge everybody tonight to watch it on FX where Team Sonic picks Kevin Casey to go up against Colin Hart. This season's turned out to be awesome. Awesome. You, you I know you. love Kevin Case. He's a, he's a, he's a semi celebrity. Oh you yeah. You know, like he from hangs out with Spencer Pratt from the Hills and all that, right, that, right. that Beverly Hills Hollywood stuff. That's right up your alley, man. That's right yeah. up my alley. Yeah, this is gonna be right up your alley uh, in a Hollywood second. Hollywood Billy Mirror. Yeah, that's it. That's it, guys. <laughs> well, joining us on the line right now is uh Simon Marcus, who is joining us from Lion Fights. He's got a huge announcement. What's going on, man? Not much, brother. Just finishing up some training and uh, getting ready for this world title fight coming up. T- tell us a little bit about this world title fight you got coming up. Okay, so uh, I'm fighting Artem Levin out of Russia. It's going to be for the first Lion Fight promotion light heavyweight world title in the Hard Rock Casino in Las Vegas. It's the fight everybody's been waiting to see. Very anticipated. We were both supposed to fight a few times, and it got put off. So it's going down now, and it's for the undisputed number one spot in the world. That is an MMA fight corner exclusive. <laughs> Huge news, man! Huge, Huge news. news. This is, and this is one of those things too, where this fight was supposed to happen so many times. So there's got to be a lot of hype, a lot of tension between you two. Like, like you guys are really ready to go in there and get it on, and, and find out who who the number one in the world is. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm sure he's just excited about his I am. I mean, we both, everybody both knows we're the top guys. He has a remarkable record, and I have a remarkable record, and everyone wants to see who's number one, so this will be their chance to prove it. Well, you, you've fought for lion fights before. Uh, what do you think about the way they're handling things and the way they were, they're bringing Muay Thai to the, let's say, the American culture? I think I think it's exactly what people are interested in. You know, it takes time for people to get more familiar with the sport of Muay Thai, but they're bringing in the best international fighters to headline their shows. They're promoting it in uh, Las Vegas, the the fighting capital of the world, and they're they're doing it big. It's on Access TV. It's they're they're really they're really giving it to the public, and I think that's what the public wants to see. 
Yeah, I got to tell you, too, their, their last card was one of the most stacked uh, uh, tie cards I've seen, especially to be in America. But to be headlined mm -hmm. by, by Yodson Clive Fairtex, one of the greatest tie fighters of his generation, and then to follow up, and, and now you're the main event, I mean, being in that same category of Yodson Clive, that, that speaks tons uh, about you as a fighter, your skill, your ability, and what the promotion thinks of you. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it takes... It takes hard work and dedication, you know, to get to the level where you're fighting the best in the world from anywhere in the world. And, um, you know, I've put in that hard work. I've dedicated 100%. So it's, it feels good to be getting the recognition and the reward. Hey, so, so give us more details on the fight. Uh, I know it's here in Vegas. I know it's at the Hard Rock. But, but what's the date? When is this going down? This is going down March 15th. Uh, tickets are on sale now. You can go to lionfightpromotions.com. And uh, it's going to be a packed house. It's going to be a, a big show. There's a lot of other uh, headline fights on that card. It's gonna, and it's going to be stand-up fighting, Muay Thai. Uh, it's going to be a lot of excitement. So, Awesome. It's going to be an awesome fight. Like card. And, and more as these... Uh, you and Levin going at it, so I'm, I'm pretty psyched for it, and we're going to all be watching on Access TV that night. Uh, oh, we'll be there. I'm sorry. We'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there, Ray. We'll be front row cheering you on, brother. <laughs> all right, well, thanks so much for joining us inside the Fight Corner and giving us that exclusive news, breaking exclusive news. <laughs> it's my pleasure. All right, brother, we'll talk to you soon. Wow, that's a, that's that a big a, fight. That's Absolutely. a big fight. I mean, these guys have been scheduled to fight like four or five times, and it was like, set, hey, here we go. It's finally going to happen. Nope. All right, let's schedule it. And it just constantly it's, keeps getting rescheduled. Stop talking about that because we might it's, jinx yeah, this one. Jinxed, right? It's going to yeah. get postponed again. <laughs> now, speaking of what we're going to talk about right now, something we have to get to. Well, I'm going to do it again. I don't care if Joey likes it or not. I'm going to do. This guy is supposed, to, is have, yeah, he's supposed to create a bumper. It takes 10 right, minutes at home, and instead of doing it, he beatboxes. The, the, the bumper. I'm too busy bumping. That's why. We have about how many how many minutes we have left? We have about three minutes left. I just want to do a little bit of Heidi's hit list news, get to it, and then of course naturally we'll be saying hasta mañana. Naturally. Heidi's hit list. <laughs> Breaking news. I all did right. it again, Joey. So uh, first of all today there was the UFC 157 conference call where Rondi, Ronda Rousey called Chris Cyborg Cryborg. Uh, <laughs> for talking about wanting to be released from her UFC contract and wanting to go to Invicta. Ronda basically said that she doesn't care about what Chris Cyborg, Cryborg has to say and that she has plenty of options, as in Ronda, to fight whoever else she wants in the UFC. Um, mm -hmm. Also, Lyoto Machida said that he thinks if he gets a win over Dan Henderson that he should get a title shot, despite all whatever happened stepping up against Jones. Uh, Ryan Couture is booked for his first fight also. He has a tough test to face in Ross Pearson at the uh, UFC on Fuel 9 card, which is taking place in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. I think this is going to be his biggest test. And I, it's, I still think it's, it's a cool a cool move by Dana, too. Let's be honest. This has happened for Ryan in his last three or four fights. They give him someone, and it's just like they step give up. him. Step up. Step up, step up, step up. KJ Noons, no joke. Obviously, Ross Pearson None either. So he's got tough fights. If anyone's going to step out of the shadow, he's going to do it the way he's building up his career right Not now. Not only that, and you know what? Ryan Couture wants to be in the UFC despite everything that's going on with him and his father right now and uh, UFC president Dana White and the organization. What Just else we got, Just a couple other things. Uh, tough 17 finale that might be here in Vegas on April 13th gets Misha Tate versus Kat Zingano. So we do have a Love second Love it, dude. I, I, I've called a bunch of Kat Zingano's fights. She's she is a beast, dude. She wrestled in high school. I think she's a purple or a brown belt under under Zingano, her husband, who's an amazing jiu-jitsu practitioner. Her striking sharp. I think she, I, I'm calling this now, man. If, if she's the dog against Tate, I'm throwing money down on her. I think she gives Tate all, t all Tate can handle. I just like that you look at this fight, and there's no dog in this fight. Two pretty kitties. <laughs> Two pretty kids, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, we want to thank our guests for joining us, Simon Marcus for joining us, Ray Seffo coming in, and, of course, Uriah Hall, the beast. We urge you to watch The Ultimate Fighter tonight. You get to see more of those fights. And we want to thank you, especially the fight fan, for always joining us here inside the MMA Fight Corner. Remember, uh, for all your exclusive MMA breaking news and interviews, visit MMAFightCorner.com. Visit us right back here this Friday at 5 p.m. We'll give you all the latest news and have a great time with you on your drive time. Until then, be well, be safe. Fox Sports Radio, 920.